Trudeau was one of the 43 world leaders in New Delhi, which means standing out was tough. But he did. Trudeau stood out by being snubbed most of the time. And to be honest, he did not really work hard to be noticed. But one leader did. That's British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. He had high expectations from this visit. Rishi Sunak joked about how some people called him India's son-in-law. I'm sure you know why. Sunak is married to Akshita Murthy. She's the daughter of Infosys founder Narayan Murthy. So Rishi Sunak had the best shot in New Delhi. He's a Hindu prime minister. He has an Indian wife. And there was some good social media chatter. So how did he do? Well, according to the British press, not so well. Look at this Guardian article. Rishi Hu, Sunak slips down pecking order in G20 scramble. Why is the British media saying that? Sunak was apparently supposed to meet Prime Minister Modi on Friday and that too at his home, but the meeting never happened. Instead, the Indian Prime Minister met Joe Biden at his residence on Friday and Sunak had to wait until Saturday. He ended up meeting Modi at a summit venue. If this is true, it's certainly a setback. This was Sunak's first visit to India after taking office. He was hoping to take the country by storm. On top of his agenda was a trade deal. India and Britain have been negotiating a free trade agreement for 18 months now. London is hoping to sign one by the end of this year, by the end of 2023. Rishi Sunak and his party need this deal. They're facing a lot of criticism over a botched up Brexit. A deal with India could fix that. So what did Sunak do? Well, everything he could really. On Sunday, he visited a Hindu temple in New Delhi. Take a look at this. I must say great pictures, but have they translated into solid gains? Rishi Sunak got his sit down with Modi on Saturday. They did discuss the free trade deal. Let me quote what the Indian government has said. Both leaders reviewed the progress of free trade agreement negotiations and expressed hope that the remaining issues could be addressed at the earliest so that a balanced, mutually beneficial and forward-looking free trade agreement is concluded soon. This is what they said after the meeting. And this could happen soon, maybe even the next month. India is hosting the Cricket World Cup this year. The tournament will be starting next month. So there is talk of Rishi Sunak returning to India for that. Maybe in, even watch the India-England match. But will he also get a deal in October? That is the question. Well, his strategy seems to be clear. Temples, cricket and Indian roots. Whether they give results is a different question altogether. As for the British media, their judgment seems a bit harsh. After all, no world leader really stood out. It was more about the agenda, about the Delhi Declaration, which is why we have stitched, sketched out the five big takeaways from this G20, the five big wins for India's G20 presidency. The first, of course, is the membership for the African Union. India spearheaded this proposal. It was not just a policy idea. It was about correcting a historical wrong. New Delhi can be proud of this success, and this picture sums it up. The Indian Prime Minister embracing the President of the African Union, this was just before he took his seat at the table. And where was Xi Jinping when this happened? Not even in the room. Forget the room, not even in the country. Now to success number two for India, the agenda and the participation. We mentioned some of this yesterday. India's G20 summit was attended by 43 world leaders. That's 20 national leaders, 9 guest countries, 14 heads of global agencies. This is the highest ever turnout at any G20 summit. The highest participation. The agenda was equally impressive. Look at the issues that were discussed. Climate financing, sustainable development, gender equality, cryptocurrency, reforming multilateralism and debt relief. The final Delhi declaration was 34 pages long. It, India made sure that the focus was on social and economic issues, basically the G20's original mandate. Success number three was a focus on people-driven G20. Again, the numbers prove this. India held 220 meetings in 60 cities, 6-0. The idea was to take the G20 out of the national capital. Around 15 million people were involved in some manner, like in organizational work or putting on cultural shows, or hospitality. India wanted to create a new template for G20. 
one that goes beyond closed door meetings in the national capital. And the reason was quite simple. If the decisions affect people, then people should have a say in the decision making process. India calls it democratization of the G20. It'll be interesting to see if other hosts take this forward. Now to success number four, consensus building. It's easier said than done nowadays. Both the West and Russia came to the G20 with a fixed mindset, not an inch back. It could have very well derailed all other issues, but in the end, India forged a consensus, a statement that all countries could live with. It's important because of how divided our world is right now. The West has problems with Russia. The West also has problems with China. China has problems with Japan over the Fukushima water release. And South Korea has problems with China. In this backdrop, consensus is not easy. Which brings us to success number five, restoring the G20's relevance and trust. Let's face it, no one, no one has high expectations from the G20. We see a lot of bickering, a lot of political grandstanding. During the pandemic, this perception became worse. The G20 failed in vaccine deliveries. It failed to protect the global economy. So many people wondered, what's the point of it? Prime Minister Modi was aware of this problem. Listen to his remarks on day one. Frank. कोविड 19 के बाद विश्व में एक बहुत बड़ा संकट विश्वास के अभाव का आया है युद्ध ने इस ट्रस्ट डेफिसिट को और गहरा किया है आज G20 के प्रेसिडेंट के तौर पर भारत पूरी दुनिया का आह्वान करता है कि हम मिलकर सबसे पहले इस ग्लोबल ट्रस्ट डेफिसिट को एक विश्वास एक भरोसे में बदलें यह हम सभी के साथ मिलकर चलने का समय है हैज दैट बीन अचीव्ड for the most part, yes, all sides have called the summit a great success, including the Western countries and Russia. China, of course, is sulking. But either way, India has shown why the G20 is important, why it's necessary to save and expand this group, which is why India invited guest countries from the global south, why India pushed for Africa's permanent membership. It is no secret that the G20 has problems. It, its members are divided. But for all its flaws, India's presidency has shown us one thing, that the world is better off with G20 than without it.